Welcome back to the Fine Art and Craft Showcase. Um, I'm Ed Wode, co-producer with Gerald Anderson of today's show. Um, this show is going to be, be about the fine art of uh, Japanese origami. Uh, today's host is going to be Carol Kasiski. <laughs> and, and the guest is going to be Michael Sanders. <laughs> It's Carolyn Kosischke, but I just go by Carolyn, that's all right. <laughs> Welcome back. We hope you enjoy this segment of origami. Um, I've got Michael Sanders on, and uh, for once a guy that's uh, showing us some origami. Guys do different things, so I think he'll enjoy, he knows what he's doing. Um, what are you going to be making today? Well, so, you know, some of my favorite uh, origami models are out of money because money happens to be paper that usually you're carrying around with you unless you're extremely poor. Um, so I'm going to kind of show off some of the, my favorite models here. Uh, this one here is uh, a flower in a pot designed by Herman Rao. And that's folded from one dollar bill. Okay, and Herman Lau is, uh lives in Sacramento and he designed that and uh, makes a great tip at restaurants. You usually get good service if you're a repeat customer. This one is uh, a very famous design. It's the Star of David. And this one is designed by a friend of mine in Hawaii. Uh, Ron Park designed this koi fish off of one piece of paper. And he was sitting in a noodle restaurant and uh, saw a painting of a koi on the wall and just got inspired to fold a, a koi fish out of it. And then uh, this here happens to be the bottom of a Coke bottle. It's a nice, nifty little container. I think uh, some uh, people in Brazil, some folders in Brazil designed that. So if you go to my uh, blog site, halfpaperworldtravel.blogspot.com, you can find a video that shows uh, directions on how to, how to make that. And uh, today what I would like to do with this dollar bill here, is I would like to bring this dollar bill to life. Because I think one of the things about paper folding is uh, it's got a certain magical appeal. And so there's a certain magic with being able to fold. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the dollar bill in half. And then I'm going to fold, keep it folded. And then right along the midline, I'm going to fold it in half again. Okay. And then open it up. Okay, so now, going off of the midline point here, I'm going to take this raw top edge, I'm going to fold that down, and this edge hits along the borderline of George. Okay? So, if it lines up to there, what's going to happen when I do this crease here, the model does not lay down flat. Okay? And I'm going to repeat the same thing on the opposite side. So this edge, again, touches along the border. So the printing of the dollar bill is very important. Um, there's a lot of the higher denominations that are offset now with the portrait. And what um, are you making? Uh, origami. Origami. That's <laughs> not going to tell us. Uh, it's a secret. I'll, I'll have you guys guess at the very end uh, as to what I'm doing. Okay, so as you can see, the two top edges are touching right along the outside edge of the border. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over, and these little uh, mountains on the ends, I have to actually pop that over into valleys. So what happens is this part here is going to release as I push that in, and then I close it back up. So now you can see that there are two valleys. Okay, I'm going to lay this back down on the table. I'm going to take this outer edge here, going, making a point. I'm going to go ahead and fold that down. Okay, I'm going to crease it. And it doesn't matter if this edge here doesn't line up to the bottom. Okay, that's not important. Okay, this uh, particular design is by Robert Neal, who is a, a magician. But the way I'm folding it right now is actually a modification of that design by uh, uh, John Andreessen, who actually lives out here in Long Beach and is a member of the West Coast Origami Guild. Okay, this 
this is just cosmetics. This is part of his modification here. You're just going to take this uh, down here, and you're going to line it up to that point, all the way down to the point down at the bottom. Okay, so the, those touch, and then you just set the crease in. This is just for cosmetic effect. Okay, so now, working off of the midline crease, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to fold that down so that this edge touches along the midline. And same thing with the other side. I'm going to fold that down so that those matches up. Okay, and you set your crease in. And then you take this and you flip it over. Okay, so now, the new edge right here is again going to fold to the center. And as I do that, I'm going to let this layer in the back swivel around. Okay, when I, uh, usually when I do this for uh, at festivals and for audiences, I, I fold pretty fast because I kind of sometimes think that watching someone fold paper can be like watching grass grow or paint dry. So. Or magic. Or, yeah, <laughs> or magic. But uh, this is a performance piece, so I actually like to fold this super fast. I'm going, it's actually kind of challenging for me to go slow right now because I'm trying to explain here things that I've been kind of doing instinctively. Like, like this part here, this, um, this is a pedal fold, and usually what I do is I just lift that up and I squeeze that together. And that's the quickest way to do that. But for those of you who are more beginners, usually what, what you teach is a pre-fold where you do the outside edge to the center, increase that down, and then you do the same thing on the other side. And then where those two points are is how much this part has to lift up. For those of you who have folded the traditional paper crane or tsudu, uh, this should look somewhat familiar to you because it involves this technique of folding here. But basically the two raw outer edges has to come to the center all the way up to a point. Okay, I'm going to just squash it down a little bit. Okay, then if I hold it up to the camera, okay, what do you suppose this resembles? Carolyn, can you take a guess if I hold it towards you? A butterfly. Right, like an origami butterfly. Now, again, this, uh, the beauty of this design, actually, will be in its ability to come to life. And the way we're going to bring it to life is by giving it the breath of life. So what I'm going to do for you, Carolyn, is I'm going to have you blow on it. Because if you blow on it, perhaps you'll, in fact, breathe some life into it. Oh, okay, you ready for this? All right. Okay, now watch very carefully.
Well, uh, it's a magic hat. You see it? Magic hat. Yeah, magic hat. Now watch. Abracadabra <coughs> and hocus pocus and... Oh, <laughs> that's so cute. Yeah, it's a nice little, uh, little party trick. <coughs> so it's got this uh, spring mechanism in the back. You palm it. And then mm -hmm. squeeze and release, and the bendy pops up. That's styling. Yeah. So those are a couple of my favorite. Can you show us how to do that one? Uh, this one would take a little bit longer, a little bit more involved. So I don't think we have time for that one today. <laughs>